I've long been, been impressed with the simple and clear definition of truth set forth in the Book of Mormon. The Spirit speaketh the truth, and lieth not. Wherefore it speaketh of things as they really are, and of things as they really will be. Wherefore these things are manifested unto us plainly for the salvation of our souls. Sadly, some young men and women in the church today ignore things as they really are and neglect eternal relationships for digital distractions, diversions, and detours that have no lasting value. My heart aches when a young couple, sealed together in the house of the Lord for time and for all of eternity by the power of the Holy Priesthood, experiences marital difficulties because of the addicting effect of excessive video gaming or online socializing. A young man or woman may waste countless hours, postpone or forfeit vocational or academic achievement, and ultimately sacrifice cherished human relationships because of mind and spirit numbing video and online games. As the Lord declared, Wherefore I give unto them a commandment, Thou shalt not idle away thy time, neither shalt thou bury thy talent that it may not be known. We live at a time when technology can be used to replicate reality, to augment reality, and to create virtual reality. For example, a medical doctor can use software simulation to gain valuable experience performing a complicated surgical operation without ever putting a human patient at risk. A pilot in a flight simulator repeatedly can practice emergency landing procedures that could save many lives. And architects and engineers can use innovative technologies to model sophisticated design and construction methods that decrease the loss of human life and damage to buildings caused by earthquakes and other natural disasters. In each of these examples, a high degree of fidelity in the simulation or model contributes to the effectiveness of the experience. The term fidelity denotes the similarity between reality and a representation of, a, of reality. Such a simulation can be constructive if the fidelity is high and the purposes are good. For example, providing experiences that save lives or improve the quality of life. However, a simulation or model can lead to spiritual impairment and danger if the fidelity is high and the purposes are bad, such as experimenting with actions contrary to God's commandments or enticing us to think or do things we would not otherwise think or do because it's only a game. Satan often offers an alluring illusion of anonymity. Lucifer always has sought to accomplish his work in secret. Remember, however, that apostasy is not anonymous simply because it occurs in a blog or through a fabricated identity in a chat room or virtual world. Immoral thoughts, words, and deeds always are immoral, even in cyberspace. Deceitful acts, supposedly veiled in secrecy, such as illegally downloading music from the internet, or copying CDs or DVDs for distribution to friends and families are nonetheless deceitful. We are all accountable to God and ultimately we will be judged of Him according to our deeds and the desires of our heart. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The Lord knows who we really are, what we really think, what we really do, and who we really are becoming. He has warned us that the rebellious shall be pierced with much sorrow, for their iniquities shall be spoken upon the housetops, and their secret acts shall be revealed. Please be careful of becoming so immersed and engrossed in pixels, texting, earbuds, twittering, online social networking, and potentially addictive uses of media in the internet that you fail to recognize the importance of your physical body and miss the richness of person-to-person -person communication. 
Beware of digital displays and data in many forms of computer-mediated interaction that can displace the full range of physical capacity and experience. Now, brothers and sisters, please understand, I am not suggesting all technology is inherently bad. It is not. Nor am I saying we should not use its many capabilities in appropriate ways to learn, to communicate, to lift and brighten lives, and to build the church. Of course we should. But I am raising a warning voice that we should not squander and damage authentic relationships by obsessing over contrived ones. I testify that God lives and is our Heavenly Father. He is the author of the plan of salvation. Jesus is the, the Christ, the Redeemer whose body was bruised, broken, and torn for us as He offered the atoning sacrifice. He is resurrected. He lives and He stands at the head of His church in these latter days. My beloved brothers and sisters, to be encircled about eternally in the arms of His love will be a real and not a virtual experience.